just it just weren't in the mood it weren't the right time so um i'll have a copy of all of you and uh, let's see let's see what happens i've had a good day today i hope all of you have had a good day so this live stream is about um anxiety loneliness and how to find gratitude in in difficult times in life or if you're going for a good place in your life right now great you can still learn I'll share some stories today. We'll see what comes out. We'll have a good conversation and hopefully it will help a lot of people. Um, it's something that I've worked through myself uh, as a teacher, a mentor um, with my clients and um, in, in my own life. You know, I've been going, for, going through these things. So let's see what happens. Let's see what comes out. Let's see what I've got on in a second. give all of you a little warning this may be emotional right so um come and have a good time okay all right get your questions in if you can i'll do the best i can to answer them right i am um, i'm an inspiration you've been watching me since 2017 wow isn't that something I can be an inspiration to another person that makes me that's nice I appreciate that right I don't know if any of you have heard of a musician called Gary Moore right and I'm, I'm not going to be upset if you haven't uh, I grew up listening to Gary Moore actually through my dad my dad used to play Gary Moore um, when I was growing up he's from Ireland I think Northern Ireland right and it was a thing where I would never have listened to Gary Moore if it wasn't for my dad playing it growing up as a kid and hearing it and you know maybe some of you can relate to this you know they often say that we don't like our parents music when we're younger because we get a bit embarrassed or we can feel a bit ashamed of our parents music but as we get older we fall in love with the very music that we used to be embarrassed about or we didn't like that there's a lot of truth in that uh, so I'd hear my dad playing uh, Gary Moore and I was always as a kid you know when you're a kid you're sort of sensitive I was um, I was quite excited and happy because I could feel my dad's joy that he was getting when he was listening to Gary Moore and uh, you know I, I just I just love this music you know the electric the guitar in it was just unique very authentic really meaningful um, and I've I've listened to Gary Moore um, ever since, since I was, I'm 40 now, since I was a teenager, so years, man, we're talking probably close to 30 years, maybe a bit less, and um, I've gone through stages of my life listening to Gary Moore, having a break, and I was listening to it yesterday and today, and listening to his stuff just made me cry with joy, I just, I just love his music. So, on today's topic of loneliness, Gary Moore's got a song called Empty Rooms, which is a beautiful song. And the lyrics are amazing. And I'm pretty certain, obviously, um, that Gary Moore would have gone through the very lyrics that he wrote. And in, and in the song, um, if I'm paraphrasing, Empty Rooms, obviously. Uh, I'm, not, I'm not a great singer, so I'm not going to start singing now. And I'm not in... I do sing, obviously, when I'm home on my own I might sing you never know but I don't want to get thrown out here having a good voice <laughs> so anyway the song empty rooms by Gary Moore it's a classic it's been covered a lot on YouTube I love the covers people do how does the lyrics go he goes um, uh, he's um, he said loneliness is your only friend uh, a broken heart that that just won't mend uh, is the price that you pay um, what does he talk about Man, I forgot the lyrics now. I think I've got a little bit shy. Um, yeah, so it goes into the song and it's, you know, it goes empty rooms where we learn to live without love. I love the song, man, because the song is so brave and it's so true to every human being. And I think the song is about, definitely about him going through a breakup with a woman. And it, you know, and it, you could apply that to deeper things in life, and we've all been for it. I've been for it. I know my clients have, and, and all of you. At some point, we all go for it, and it's tough. But there's something beautiful about the song, and the, and the honesty of the song, and, and even though 
a lot of people might go, oh, that's really depressing, you know, about someone that's, you know, heartbroken and, and they're lonely and they're kind of feeling uh, abandoned. They don't have any love. Love isn't present and they're, and they're in like a, a room. But I, I, don't, I don't receive it that way. Um, at least not right now anyway, because that's what we go through. That is the struggle of being human. But we don't stay there if we don't give up. We get to a place of love. You get over it. Or, or he writes a beautiful piece of music from his loneliness, from his breakup, from his pain. And it inspires millions of people. You know, his music's really inspirational. And obviously he's done other songs that are, that are amazing. That's just one of the songs. And the lyrics really did resonate with a lot of the things that I've gone through in my life. All of my clients at some point, many of you friends and people that I just meet from day to day, some of my heroes online and, and human beings at the end of the day, you know, and there we're all human. But what I got from that song, many things, is what I've learned is that, you know, how can I explain it? These are the places sometimes that you've got to go through to find love, you know, within yourself or connection. And I call it gratitude because we all experience loneliness. And I remember having a realization a few years ago. And at the time, I didn't have the courage to admit to myself, let alone publicly to my clients or any of you or other people, that I've really struggled with loneliness throughout my life. It was one of my biggest anxieties as a, as a kid growing up. Now, growing up, I got a lot of love at times, but I also felt that I didn't always get a lot of love. I'm sure we all feel like that. So whether that was true or not, I felt, from most of the part growing up, I definitely felt abandoned. I definitely felt that love was not conditional. You know, it, was, um, it wasn't unconditional, sorry. I, it, it kind of came, it was taken away from me. I had it, I lost it. Caused me a lot of anxiety and stress and pain and scared me to death. But it also made me, um, it made me, um, what's the right word? What did it do? It made me um, really think about how can I love myself more in a healthy way? How can I find it? How can I give love more? How can I learn to be on my own and not need people all the time to make me feel loved? Um, and that has been obviously, that's been an ongoing um, living uh, experience depending on what I'm going through in my life you know what people around me are going through what relationship I'm in what I'm dealing with all those things so my faith helped me a lot even when I was younger uh, my faith in, um, in Jesus Christ because when I feel at my most painful loneliest times you know when I felt like and I'm not saying that this is fundamentally true but if I felt like my mum and dad don't love me or um, they're not giving me the love that I need right now and friends are not available and I'm on my own I've got no one I feel abandoned I'm terrified I'm, I feel ashamed I shouldn't feel like this but I'm going through these things where do I go I go to God I go to my faith you know I go to the place that um, well I've always gone to when I'm I'm really struggling I'm desperate and pride's been completely smashed in the ego and I might feel embarrassed I might feel ashamed I might feel that I shouldn't be feeling so insecure but when I when I admit that and I've um, surrendered to that um, there's no telling how long it can take but then I feel really loved really good I feel the presence of um, I feel the presence of God I feel the presence of Jesus I feel something or um, I go see my nan I go and um, I go and stay at my nan's and I've never felt so much loved from a human being as I do from my nan or also as well this is true for many times the love that I got from my mum which I'm, I'm lucky I'm grateful you know when I felt uh, comfortable to go to my mum and say you know uh, mum I love you very much you know do you love me and my mum would say oh, of course I love you I love you so much but that wasn't always the case so I, I know that a lot of people would hear that and, and go oh you're really lucky I didn't have that and you're right, you know, and, and I was lucky, but it wasn't always like that because I wouldn't have, have had all the mental health problems that I had. I wouldn't have had all the depression. I wouldn't have times in my life where 
I didn't want it, but I was suicidal. I was thinking about killing myself because I didn't feel loved and I felt petrified, lonely, uh, nervous, anxious, no trust, no love, nowhere to go, homeless, frightened, angry, hurt, jealous, all the feelings that all human beings go through. So um, back to the point of um, Gary Moore's song, when I, when I hear that now as a 40 year old man, I'm still young at heart, I hear it on a deeper level to how I heard it when I was 20, when I was 15. Beautiful song. It's a big problem today as we know, right? Um, so many people, so many people, millions, millions of people around the world feel abandoned and lonely and they don't feel loved. So many, and I don't mean this in a, um, I'm being honest, many celebrities, many people that you see online, God bless them, they've got millions of pounds, they've got, you know, 10 million followers, and they've got all these fans around the world, but deep down, they feel lonely. They, they don't love themselves. They don't feel loved. God bless them. Um, if my videos can do everything, I'd feel really good about that. And um, not to say that I'm, I don't want to be a celebrity and I didn't have a million followers, but I guess the facts were I was famous at a certain point and I had fans all around the world and I really appreciated it and it made me feel great. And there was a certain time when I did love myself, I definitely did. But there was a period where I had a breakdown and I didn't love myself, I didn't like myself. And it didn't matter that I had some money and I had a little bit of fame and I had all these followers because I felt worthless. I felt terrible, I felt frightened, I felt unloved. So all that stuff doesn't mean anything. It doesn't mean anything if you truly don't feel safe and loved. And you, and, you, and you haven't got connection with other people, with yourself, or you just don't feel good. It, it, it don't help. Um, maybe I'm going to talk about that at some point on another video. But obviously, I'm sure, you know, um, not, it doesn't mean because someone's got a lot of followers and a lot of money and they're famous that they don't love themselves. No, that, and I don't want that to be true. So, but we're just, I'm just making a point of saying that at some point everyone goes through it. Some of you might be asking, which you've got to write, how do I know this? And, and I'm ready for this question to come at me. Well, I know it because of my life experience, because of studying people, because of mentoring people for 12 years, and having um, a sensitivity around how people are really feeling, when they're telling the truth, when they're not. And of course, people sharing their story, I listen. I listen carefully when um, someone who's very famous that I admire shares their vulnerability and some people don't listen properly they only hear maybe what they want to hear and they only see what they want to see so I'm able to listen beyond the surface of what people put out on social media and what they are trying to project what they hope people will see and think about them as opposed to what they really feel about themselves deep down so I think we know we all struggle with love. We all struggle, it's an ongoing struggle. Um, and there are periods where you feel good, you feel loved, I feel loved, I don't feel lonely, I feel secure. But it only takes a trigger um, to affect you and pull you out of that feeling. And that's why, you know, that's, um, that's why everybody struggles with love. That's why people struggle with relationships. That's why people are so desperate to be liked on social media at many stages of their life including me I don't exclude me from this so that's where I guess it's about um, really appreciating what's important in your life what's really meaningful as opposed to the things that are very fleeting because somebody like in this video or my videos I, if I'm I can appreciate that and go that's nice but I would not put all of my hope in that anymore knowing what I know and having been through beautiful things in my life but really tragic painful things as we all go through now um, as some of you know I am um, devastated heartbroken 
grateful, been grieving that my friend passed away, uh, who took his own life. Now, that experience has changed me forever as a person. Because I loved my friend to death, loved, loved him so much, and I just loved being around him. And that's a wonderful thing. I just had a great friendship with him. We had amazing conversations over coffee. Um, I couldn't be any thankful or more lucky to have had a beautiful friend like him and to be so, we just had a great time. But I didn't want to lose him. And for the last year, of course, because I love my friend and I'm grieving, and I'm, I'm lonely without him. Now I can't just go on Amazon or I can't just find anyone. He's unique, he's my friend. I had a good relationship with him. We went through amazing experiences. And um, he was only 47, was he? Um, so that's hurt me. That's made me feel uh, sad, but it's made me grateful. It's made me appreciate life. Um, having a cup of coffee, if that can put into context and really care about people more, have more empathy and boundaries as well and personal boundaries for when people have got for their BS which I won't tolerate but genuinely care about people more and uh, that's never never a negative thing that puts into perspective what we're talking about today and what I'm hoping to help as many of you as I can with with my honesty with my uh, life experiences mentorship my own challenges the joy the shrimp that I get from the faith and this coffee that gives me strength. So honesty is really important, you know, a lot of people I mean, I knew this from when I was younger. Um, I was really good at it, you know. There's many things that I weren't good at. Um, I don't know if a lot of you, you don't know all my life, but many things growing up and I'm not good at now. I, was, I wasn't skilled at it, I was very insecure, but I was always really good at communicating. I had a real, um, I had a gift for that. I had a gift for being honest and courageous and communicative and sensitive and caring and vulnerable. And of course I got punished for that growing up. I got bullied and, and abused quite a lot, which hurt me badly, but made me stronger. That's why I started teaching and that's why I, I talk and help people through talking, through communication. Because a lot of the love that I felt for myself and I could give to others and through faith was through communication, learning something new today, always learning. So communicating how you feel can change the way that you feel so simply if you're feeling lonely and unloved but you're scared to say that if you say that out loud I guarantee all of you um, I can't guarantee instantly it could happen it happens for me at times and my clients or any human being I guarantee you you will start to feel the very opposite you won't feel as lonely and you won't feel as abandoned or not loved or rejected or not heard or not appreciated or not valued or that you don't matter even though these things are not true they're human feelings you feel better you feel stronger and then you won't feel embarrassed and ashamed because a big part of human pride and fear is not wanting a human being to know that you don't feel loved that you don't feel good enough that you do feel maybe all the time you feel that way or maybe it's periodic you feel left abandoned not heard people don't want people to know that and i didn't want people to know that about me until i went through some beautiful things in life some tragic things some painful things the pain eventually broke me down it made me more truthful and through that process um i no longer cared um not from an angry point although i had to work through that as you do I no longer cared what people thought. It didn't really matter what people thought about me, whether they, it didn't matter. I actually wanted to share it. It was important for me to share that and tell the whole world. And so I just want to let everybody know, by the way, the whole world, um, at times in my life, especially as a child, 
I felt lonely. I didn't know how to love myself. I could love other people. I'm very good at doing that and kind. That's a great thing, thank God. But I didn't know how to give it to myself because of my um, pain or abuse growing up or my uh, human nature, whatever you want to call it, whatever the case may be. And I need to tell everybody because there was a time in my life where it blackmailed me and frightened me. And I thought if I tell everybody, it's going to bring harm on me. It's going to make these things come true. But the opposite happened actually brought me um, a lot of love and it took me out of the loneliness that I was um, terrified of being in. It uh, really did. And it played out in so many beautiful ways that I'm grateful for through friendships and through me actually making naturally making someone else through friendship and being just being genuine making someone else feel appreciated and that they matter which they do and all of us do and not abandoned not lonely and friendships do that that's the beauty of friendships that's why um it's something that um should be appreciated when you've got a good friendship with someone because you know two lonely people who feel not loved come together are vulnerable and honest and they feel that um emptiness uh, if you want to call it that and they make you feel great and that's what my nana was done for me and uh, i know how much i meant to my nana or any good friend and my mum many times and um you know and my dad when he was in um when he was in his good spirit and, and so forth. So a lot of the times we think about ourselves, so do I. But sometimes we don't realize what, what we can do to give to others. Because we're so busy thinking, and we all do it, I do it too. Oh, I'm not good enough, oh, I feel lonely, I don't feel love, right? But you, you have to honor that at times. But you don't realize that you've got the ability to make someone else feel loved and to appreciate it. Isn't that, isn't that something to be grateful for? You can get your questions in, you know. Don't be nervous, all of you. If I can answer it, it will. And as always, if I can't, I will politely say I can't answer that question or or it's um you know it's not appropriate, but I'll I'll answer your question if I can. But yeah, today um millions of men all around the world are feeling lonely, they're feeling abandoned because of this stigma of a man always needing to be tough all the time, which is um, uh, ridiculous, it's not truthful, it's not correct. And it's, um, it's definitely not, it's not holy, it's not God. And it um, needs to change, it needs to change for ASAP. Because um, if it doesn't, then things are gonna get worse, we're gonna see, which is tragic, and I wanna change that. We're gonna see more suicide uh, amongst men because if they can't communicate the fact that they're really struggling and they need help ASAP, and then this is going to, um, you know, suicide's going to continue. But there are a lot of good people that are speaking out, that are making a difference, both men and women, old and young, and I'm seeing it more. So um, that's important, really important. That's why I do these talks as well. And that's why I speak on um, the joy in my life, the challenges in my life, and having a personal experience with losing a friend, losing my friend that I love, to sadly to suicide. Um, only, it's been over 12 months now, and it's, um, what can I say, it's really tough. But I do take comfort in knowing that um, that all those that we've lost they're in a good place now they're at peace I, I believe i believe they're in heaven i really do believe that i believe they're in a better place which um, makes you feel more it makes you feel better for them and for you it gives you some it gives you hope it gives you it gives you peace or a, a healthy closure if that's the right word i'm words sometimes i lose the words because it's so meaningful it makes you feel better so if anyone out there and if you're on this stream of feeling that you're going to take your own life, don't do it. I hope you can hear my story, right? Speak to someone, get some help ASAP. Um, I know it's not easy. It's, it's hard. It's very hard. I've been for it myself. I've, I've been suicidal. It's very difficult. But, if, but it gets easier if you practice it. 
could CBT um, only be a good way to get rid of social anxiety? No, no, not from my experience. Uh, listen, it can work because again, this is about you, but from my experience, um, cognitive behavioral therapy, I love it. I, I absolutely believe in it and love it. But with cognitive behavioral therapy, it needs to also include exposure therapy, which is exposure to people. Your social anxiety is a fear of humans, people. It's a fear of intimacy, vulnerability, a fear of trusting. And to overcome those fears, you have to, not, not in one go, but you have to expose yourself to people. I had massive social anxiety in my 20s. It made me suicidal. I got over it through um, getting help and, you know, gradually facing my fear and socialising, if that makes sense. I think your question is pretty much accurate, if I've understood it right. But because you said, could it be, no, could CBT only be good to get rid of social anxiety? Oh yeah, I see your question. Um, well, I would add it depends on who's giving you the CBT, what the relationship you've got with your therapist, and um, even in Frank. So it's kind of a, for me, that's kind of a yes and no answer. This is where it gets tricky sometimes when people ask me or they ask teachers, does that work? And there's a bit of gray area because it depends on the relationship you've got with that teacher, doesn't it? And it depends on the work that you put in. I mean, no medication, only using CBT. That depends, depends, I can't. I, I know your question, I can't say for sure because I don't know you and I don't know how bad your social anxiety is. So I'm reluctant to say yes and no indefinitely because again, it depends on the person and the approach. I think that's a big part of grey areas sometimes that gets neglected and it can be dangerous for people because people just see things a bit too black and white. Right, I've got social anxiety so therapy must work. And then they go to a therapist and the therapist is not empathetic enough and then people lose trust and go they don't care about me. Or they try the therapy, they don't stick it along enough and then they go it doesn't work, all therapy don't work. And it's like hang on a minute, that's not entirely true that therapist didn't work, right? It doesn't mean they're not good at their job because they might have changed hundreds of people's lives and it's not your fault or theirs, you just don't have a, you don't connect with them. So you gotta go and look for another therapist or a teacher or a mentor that you do trust, it does work. So I wanna stress relationships very important. I'm not gonna be right for everyone. Now my teaching works, it's worked for so many clients, it's worked for me. But it's not going to work for everyone because some of you, some people might not like me. And I can't do anything about that. And I, I, might, I might not like you. It's not personal because we might not get along. It doesn't mean I hate you. It doesn't mean you've got to hate me. I care about people. But you'd have to get or, you know, you'd have to get someone that you gel with. And that's in, that goes with all types of coaching and mentors. And I think sometimes people people blame teachers because they have a few bad experiences and they go oh and you've got to be careful of that but it's human nature um, and I speak from someone who is a teacher and who helps a lot of people to change and I've also got therapy and people I've, I've had mentors and teachers some of them that they didn't work for me same I felt I'm the same like all of you no I don't really trust them it's not personal they don't seem like they care that's just their personality. I might be paranoid, it might be wrong. I go and find a teacher, I feel tr I trust this person. It did work, it got me great results, thank you. So it depends on the person, depends on the relationship, it depends on you, it depends on what works, how you react. It's not just black and white, you know, and that's what a lot of people do today. They just go, diets don't work, I've tried them. It's like, no, diets do work. Maybe you weren't disciplined enough, the diet that you chose didn't didn't work for you and your body. You did you didn't keep going. You didn't find the right diet and the right person. So these things do work. <clears throat> but I understand people's feelings. I, I understand I'm human as well. And there's, there was times where I felt like I'm going online. I've got a particular problem, and I'm listening to all these people. None of it's working. What's going on? But then, as time went on. I would get a better understanding and say actually they were truthful 
it did work, it's just I was impatient. Or sometimes people, yeah, they're not telling the truth. That's part of life. You've got to, you've got to mature and get beyond that. And that's where, um, that's where faith comes in and hope and get in the right relationships. But yeah, it's good that you asked me that question. good exercise it takes a lot of courage um, I've learned this I've learned this throughout my whole life uh, I've learned it from my um, uh, parents the values good values that they brought me up with my own my own um, heart my faith people pain you know good relationships not so good ones and that's given if you can give to other people and when I say give I mean from an appropriate place obviously it's not getting abused and toxic relationships but if you're genuine to other people and you're kind and honest then as a consequence not a technique you will feel more loved because you're giving more love out and this is something that i see a lot of people fail at they go wrong they are wondering why they don't feel loved why and i, I understand but they're not giving much love out, and if you're not giving a lot of love out, then it, then you're then you're not going to feel that loved. It's like anything. It's like if you're not being generous to people, then the likelihood is a lot of people are not going to be generous to you because you're kind of getting what you're giving out. Um, if that makes sense, so that's really important. Now, you know, whatever stage you're at in life, and that takes courage, it takes character, it takes strength. But you can do it if you face your anxiety and fear. And everybody's got to do that on a day-to-day -day basis. It takes courage to be kind when people have not been kind to you or to me or others. That takes a level of maturity. And that's not based on your age. That's based on um, you, know, you as a person, your character. So friendship, you know, giving fellowship to other people. And that doesn't mean lifelong. It could be that. You might see someone you're never going to see them again and you have a short encounter with them. But in that time, you're nice with them. You're polite, you're friendly. You treat them how, how you want to be treated. These simple things, that sound simple, but you put them into practice and, and they're pretty life-changing to self-esteem, anxiety, love, eradicating loneliness, feelings of being um, abandoned, not good enough. Great values. Uh, don't cost any money, but they cost, um, I guess, some courage. To some people it comes more natural because of the way that they were brought up, their values, their personality, which I understand. But for those people that it doesn't come natural, you can practice so it becomes uh, more natural, more um, second nature. put a lot of videos today on Instagram on fitness um, I love fitness and, and I love to share it with other people to help them really good for anxiety good for all areas for mental health for confidence definitely for any stage of, especially for people if you're going for a breakup at the moment and you're in a lot of pain you're going through grief or depression or a mental health breakdown or you've had a financial loss or you've lost someone close I can't stress enough the value the life saving value of going out and working out it will give you what you need right now which is love which is relief which is um feeling good confidence a reboost recharge all those things and a lot more by working out you know going to the gym and i've said it before again it's what i said about the therapy you've got to find a routine that works for you because my routine might not work for all of you but the principle is the same if you exercise regularly better mental and physical health, emotional, all these areas, 
that you've got to find a routine, which is great. You should enjoy that. Could be swimming, could be weights, could be boxing, could be mixed martial arts, could be running, could be cardio, could be classes. It doesn't really matter. It's, what's important is that you enjoy it, you get a lot out of it, and, and you um, put your energy into it. So exercising takes away loneliness, takes you out of that space and you know makes you feel the opposite. You know what, you're, you're, you're right, I'll go for the bread and uh, one more yeah. uh, coffee. Will you coffee in, yeah? Yes please, thank you. <laughs> Have fun. <laughs> That's alright. As part of the policy, I know you've got to say any allergies and I've got to say no. Um, uh, pollen, hay fever, but there's no hay fever in here. There's no pollen in here. Cheese and, and bumblebees. <laughs> but other than that, I'm all right. Thank you. That's friendly. So, um, yeah. Uh, let, let, let's simplify it because I, I said I'd go very deep today, right? And it's um, friendships. Friendships are probably the most meaningful thing, one of the most meaningful things um, with living, with our existence. And to think that I've got to say that today and remind people is um, is shocking. But that's the time we're living in, where you know the internet has um, made people forget some of the most important things, which is friendship, fellowship connection love one of the most places where you get the most love through giving love receiving and in a healthy way and i always say you know a good relationship because it it feels correct and it's it's based on both giving and not one person extracting and taking and draining you and making you feel mentally sick and tortured and, and just not appreciated that's not a good relationship that's an unhealthy one it's one where it's back and forward. And it's not a measuring stick. You don't start writing down and going, right, so I, I got you a coffee yesterday. You've got to get me a coffee today. I complimented you yesterday. You've got to compliment me back. I mean, that would be hilarious. It's not, it's not that strategic. It's no strategy. It's flowing. It's human. It's vulnerable. It's not perfect, but it is correct. There we go. <laughs> Been a, it's been an amazing day today. I really, really enjoyed today. It's, um, it's an understatement. Uh, waiting for a few more questions. Uh, how you doing, Frank? You still on the stream? How's your um? How's that? How's the acting progressing? And how's the travelling? Let us know. Let's have a few minutes to get my breath. I'm gonna pass out. You go busy when you when you're so honest and vulnerable. <laughs> it's like being in a, it's like being in a sauna. Um, so yeah. Yeah, I don't know if any of you, um, if you inspired to check out that song um, by Gary Morrison. You know what, guys? Right? I'm just going to have a short toilet break, and I'll be back.
right. Appreciate your uh, patience. You know what? I might um. So yeah, I might end this stream and then do it and do another one. So a couple of um. Of, um, here's a list of things that you can do to um, I would say this is a strategy you can use to overcome loneliness on a daily basis uh, as I've said in, in no in no conjugal order so I think the first most important thing is the, is the honesty to admit uh, what you're feeling uh, again everyone can do that in their own way um, I mean, I personally do that through my faith. I will pray to God, I'll be honest and say, I'm lonely, I'm struggling on any given day. Can you help me? And that helps me. I will, um, I will help other people. I will learn to enjoy my own company by going gym, sitting down, reading, drinking a coffee, uh, you know, being around animals. Obviously the obvious ones when you're lonely is meeting up with friends and, and having a good time, friendship. Um, you know, doing what I love, doing what you love, running your business, creating content, cleaning, all the things that I've said on the daily discipline, all these things can help. They can all take you out of that place of anxiety, despair, and loneliness. So sometimes it's the most simple thing, the most simple thing that you wouldn't even believe and imagine that could work, can work. Um, but I think obviously the most important thing is connection with yourself and other people. But like I said, you don't need to do this in any particular order because um, you know, we're, human beings are quite complicated and feelings and emotions can change by the second in the hour. Um, so there's that. Yeah, so then, then most of the things that you can do. Um, and of course, like, like some of you have said, getting therapy or getting a mentor, you know, and not being embarrassed about that and not being ashamed when you shouldn't be because that's what smart people do. They get help when they need it. And that's what I've done many times when I've needed help, when I've been struggling with mental health or anxiety and loneliness or a breakup or... And then I've got better and you've got, in, you've got back to feeling good again, feeling loved um, or confident, however you want to put it, feeling good about yourself and not being lonely and being able to... I need to touch on this because, you know, you can be lonely but be around people and yourself. So the loneliness is obviously an inside feeling. So when you don't feel lonely, you can really enjoy being on your own. And I know, well, I know for all human beings, so I'm, I'm one of you. When I'm feeling good, I love being on my own. I don't feel lonely because what it, what it, what it, it really is, is the anxiety is not there because we're calm and we feel relaxed and happy and focused on, we're just relaxed, we're in a good place. So we don't need to feel, oh, I've got to be around loads of people. I've got to be on social media. I've got to have, uh, I've got to be around a thousand people to feel not lonely. No, you can be on your own. And then you can be with your friends or other people and feel the opposite of lonely, I guess, which is loving to, you know, love and connected, etc. or grateful. I prefer the word gratitude, um, a bit more accurate right now. And it's also understanding that you're not on your own in feeling lonely. It's, we're living in a world where, you know, unfortunately a lot of people lie about what they're feeling, which is their choice. I think at some point everyone's done that. And that makes people feel like they're different when you're not. But there's a lot of people that are honest, like myself, like a lot of you that are honest about whether they're feeling good or not. And then that makes you feel better that you're not on your own. You're not less important or less lovable than anyone else so all these things help um, at any given stage at any given time and you know it's little simple things like I, if I'm lonely and, and struggling if I watch some boxing I feel good again or if I listen to some music or if I I read something from the Bible that I really feel connected and it makes me feel strong and it takes me out of it right? I go I go to the church have a prayer or I go for a long walk in the park or a run so there's a, there's a multitude of things that you can do if you're feeling lonely and disconnected and you're feeling that you're on your own and you're frightened. Many things you can do that I've, I've talked about throughout the stream.
Uh, a lot of the times as well, it's a funny one. Sometimes not doing anything fixes it. That's something that's fascinated me for a long time. You know, again, sometimes when you force love, you don't, you don't feel it, you don't experience it. When you force yourself to not be lonely, you, tend, you end up feeling more lonely. When you force feeling not good enough, you feel worse. So a lot of the times it's, which takes courage and sometimes nothing, not trying to do all these things and just finding a way of, you've heard it before, but not forcing these things and then you actually go, oh, I feel really good, I, I feel like I'm good, I don't need anything. So there's that as well, that's fascinating. But I found that I found, you know, to simplify all of it, exercising stops you feeling lonely. Spending time with the right people, that's really important because obviously, as we said, if you're around negative people, you know, they're not going to make you feel good. Thanks. Jonathan, your back is coming. Thank you. Appreciate that. Oh, that's all right. Appreciate it. I'm joking. <laughs> Thank you. That's lovely. I appreciate it. I'm like, oh, so good as well. I ordered even two, but I put one there just in case. If you don't have it, I don't have it. You can have it. Thank you very much. It's kind of you. Thank you. I love it. It's lovely, the bread. I'm just being thankful. Little things, you know. Little things. But it takes time, man. It's not easy for people. It's not, it's not easy for me at times. We've got to allow for that, that we're all human. We all have our struggles, I do as well. It's not giving up, it's having faith. Um, you know, simple things. I'm going to depress everyone. All of you are going to think I'm old and you're going to run off the stream, but that's fine, that's my insecurity. I can laugh about it. I met a dog yesterday, it was beautiful. Two days ago, was it yesterday? No, it was yesterday. His name was Smokey, it made my whole day. They say a dog's a man's best friend now. I'm beginning to see that to be true. Anyway, there was this, um, uh, there was this woman and she had this dog and usually I, I, don't, um, I don't stroke other people's dogs because I always had a fear that what if it bites me, but I just, I was in a, I was in a place of, um, where did I just come from? I can't remember where I come from, the church, from having a prayer from the gym, and I was feeling quite grateful. And um, so I stroked the dog and had a chat, it was lovely. Thank you. And I asked her what the name was, and um, thank you. His name was uh, Smokey, I think it was, um, she was French, so I, I stroked the dog. It was a beautiful dog, man, so friendly. I don't know, I can't remember what it was. Just adorable. And it made my whole day. <laughs> my whole day was made up because I met a lovely dog. A few seconds, just the joy, you know, of, um, the dog was beautiful. Um, so it was nice meeting the dog and I said goodbye in French, au revoir. So that, that, I mean, that you know, these are the things that make you happy, you know, especially if you're, if you're grieving and you're in a lot of pain and you've got, you're forced, you're, you're, you're forced to be, <laughs> you're forced, you're forced to find joy. You have no choice, you're in so much pain, and that's a beautiful thing. That's something that I'm not even going to be begin to even try to explain on this live stream, because we'll be here till next week. Yeah, laughing, that made me happy, that gave me joy. You know what, am I going to eat this biscuit? No, I'm not. I'm going to... I can't really eat this one online. I'm sorry I feel a bit rude eating this, but I'm, I'm hungry. So yeah, these are all the things. Don't give up. At the end of the day, everyone's human. Eh? No one's better than anyone. Even though we don't live in a world which doesn't promote that, but I'm, that's, that's, not, that's, not why, that's not how I live. That's not what my faith teaches me, and I don't believe that, but I get it. Good to see you, Mitchell. How are you? Hope you're doing well. How are you doing? Oh, 
what I'm grateful for. My friend introduced me to this place and the values that my family taught me, which is to have good manners, treat everyone how you want to be treated, have respect. And that's why generally they treat me really well in here because, you know, I, tre I treat people with respect. I have good manners and, you know, I just, I just be myself. So I, I'm, I'm well grateful. Sorry if I'm making all of you hungry. I didn't mean to do this, but I'm um, just um, all the working out takes a lot out of you. I had a healthy meal before I came out at home. I cooked it. It's on my Instagram. You can check it out. But I feel in great shape. So amazing training session today. So I'm just getting a bit more energy. And On a lighter note, I can't wait for the um, Tyson Fury Usyk fight. I can't wait for that. I'm, I'm actually going to do a video about that prediction. Those of you that will watch this stream later on, I really appreciate you coming on my channel and watching it. Um, I hope that it gives you what you are, what you need, which is hope, confidence, some mentorship, therapy, all the things that you're looking for when you come on my channel, my video, some inspiration. It's a channel I've been following at the moment. I love them. I really appreciate them. It's a boxing channel, lovely people. Um, I want to get more people to subscribe to their channel because I'm they give me so much value. Um, when I've had days where I've been lonely, I've been feeling a bit down. I've gone on their stream, I watch their stuff and I feel great. What's the name of the channel? It's by, um, it's by Ben, I think it's Doherty, Gary Stretch, former boxer and actor, lovely guy. And another lovely guy, all, all boxers um, go by, the, it's called, what's it called? It's called Sugar. Sugar, Stretch and Silk or the other way around. I'll put a link somewhere for those of you that like boxing. Very authentic, really experienced guys. What I like about the channel, when you when you ask questions, they're very they're very gen very genuine. They answer questions, they talk to you, they've been they talk to me. I love it. Good people, honest, authentic, entertaining. And they talk about life as well, which I like, not just boxing. By the way guys, I forgot to mention, I've got an event next week, it's free, you're welcome to come, I'm doing a two hour get together for people that want to face their anxieties and their fears. Um, we'll have a coffee, we'll have a good conversation. I'll give a brief and talk, share some things that will help you. It's going to be nice. If you want to come along, send me an email to book your place. It's, um, it's next Sunday from 1 till 3. I'll put the details up soon on, on, my, um, on the community section. Beautiful here, man. I love it. Best bread I've ever tasted in my life, one of the best. Yeah. 
If there is one thing I can say throughout this stream, I know we've covered a lot of stuff, which is great. It's good to have the dialogue and get things out, explain to people. If I could boil it down to one word, I would say it's the courage to be honest and admit that you're lonely. And that's what a lot of people struggle with, especially men, because of pride. I understand. I struggled with it as well for years. I've started to make more progress. And what's forced me to do it is I want to help more people. And I know that if I'm not honest and vulnerable about the fact that I get lonely as well at times, and I've been lonely, then none of you are going to do it because you're going to feel you're going to feel that you're um, you're not going to feel safe to come forward and say it. And I don't want people to feel like that. And that's how you get out of these things. And that's a big part of my, well, especially part of my mental health recovery and breakdown. And even till this till this present day now. It takes a lot of bottle, it really does, for any person to outrightly say, because you've got a, you're risking being judged, which I told you I'm fine about. Um, but then you, then you don't feel lonely when you say it. But if you bottle it up and you don't say that you're lonely because you want to pretend to people that you're whatever you want them to think you are or the idea in your head about what you think you need to be, you just suffer worse. It's horrible. It's not fair on people. And I wouldn't... Um, I wouldn't treat anyone like that and I wouldn't treat myself like that knowing how painful that can be and has been um, when I've been in that relationship and I've seen people go through it I've seen the joy with my clients that I've been able to admit it and they know that I'm not judging them because I just will share my story straight away and say don't be embarrassed, don't feel ashamed because I felt what you felt and we can get out of it by you admitting it and getting it out freeing yourself up because it's not just the loneliness, it's the judgment and the shame and the embarrassment and the fear of what other humans will think that makes it even worse. But courage is saying, well, I don't really, I don't care to care what you think. I care about what is true and I want to get past this and share it and not in an angry way, but just genuine. That's strength, that's character. And then, you feel, and then you're not lonely anymore. You feel a lot better. And, and then you get over what will people think it's, you don't worry about what they think you worry about living a good life being a good person and being truthful with an emotion that you're feeling or you know you might be going for a period where you're lonely and i've been through these as well where you're lonely every single day for a year or six months and then but you'll be able to change someone else's life or help them when you admit that That's the danger today with social media, and even before social media, is that people feel that they can only share the good news, they can only say, well, I'm, you know, when you're feeling good, which most people will get jealous. If I said I feel great, and I do feel great today, or things are going well, financially, relationships, everything's going well, most people in their state of mind would get jealous immediately. There'd be resentment and jealousy, unless they're in a different place. So, you can't win like that. So people, you know, get in this trap, this predicament. And I'm not going to say names, it's because I care. And I care about good people. And I've seen people online, they're going for that struggle right now. I can see it because I've been through it. And they're projecting that things are going well, I'm great, everything's fine. And it's not fine. They're not in a good place. They need some help. They need someone to care for them. So they can actually get in a good place and be honest about that rather than having mental health problems potentially being suicidal and being in a terrible place but because they feel pressure that they've got to fulfill an obligation to their followers which is which is not fair on them and most of the time um, some of their followers don't care about them because they don't know them to really love them a lot of their followers do care about them there'll be a lot of genuine people that wouldn't want them to go through that so it's important it's important to communicate and be honest about what you're feeling and, and where you're at. And that's how you get to a good place in life with communication. Anyway, on that note, um, I'm going to end it on the 60 minute mark. It feels like time now. Give me time to maybe do some other videos and things. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed the live stream. I know it was quite heavy today, but it was necessary. And not every stream will be this heavy, but you know, these are things that I'm going through at the moment. A lot of you are, a lot of people are. 
So I want to help more people and, and let people know that despite the challenges, you can still have a great time every day because I'm doing it. I've had, a, I've had a great day today. I feel great right now. I don't feel great every day all the time, obviously, with grieving and going through challenges in life. That's the whole point of hope. You know, contradictory to a lot of people's thinking and anxiety that people think that, well, you can't find joy, you can't find gratitude, or you can't find love if you're going for a breakup or suicidal thoughts or you've lost someone that you love dearly or, you know, or you're just feeling down or things are not going well financially. And that's not true because that's um, it's not true. I, I'm, I'm doing it. I've experienced it. And quite a lot of people that are, mean a lot to me, mentors, friends, my clients, they've done it. So you can do it. You can do it. Definitely do it. I'm proof. You can do it through daily discipline, through good people, through kind words, through faith, through um, basic things that I've mentioned today. You know, spending time with a, a nice, cuddly, nice animals, cats, dogs, being kind to others, getting help, all these things, <coughs> which are pretty much all around communication. Anyway, speak to all of you soon. I appreciate you coming on. All right, good luck.